mathematicians of the world routinely boast that mathematics is founded upon rigorous definitions. One bright scholar tells us that Moth is about miking definitions. And another one says that Mathematics requires more precision than everyday speech. Mathematicians refer to this precision of language and logic as rigor. However, when you investigate further, you discover the exact opposite. There is not a single valid definition in all of mathematical physics. A case in point is the word point. The building block of geometry and of theories the likes of general relativity, quantum mechanics, and string theory. One scholar begins his presentation with a warning. He tells you that a point cannot even be defined. If you're doing geometry, no amount of physical torture will get me to define a point. It's an undefined term. Another expert claims the words points, lines, and planes are left undefined. We thus avoid circularity. So much for rigorous definitions in mathematics. What is perplexing is that in spite of these disclaimers, the mathematicians nevertheless attempt to define the word point. In four or five different ways, of course. We may think of a point as a dot on a piece of paper. Points are infinitely small! The mathematicians lead you to believe that a point is a dot you can barely see. They exemplify that a point is like the period at the end of a sentence. This is what most people imagine when someone invokes the word point. However, the mathematician now takes a magic wand and converts the dot into an abstract location. Is a dot the same thing as a location? Does it make any sense to use a physical marker such as a geometric dot to specify a location? In mathematics, apparently it does. A point chose an exact location or position on a plane surface it's important to understand that a point is not a thing, but a place. The geometric point is a place? Is this what the mathematicians are going to construct cubes and spheres with? Places? But the scholars are not finished brainstorming. Now they tell you that a point is neither a dot nor a location. A point has actually something to do with numbers. Each point in the plane is now a location in the Cartesian plane and is represented by an ordered pair. We went from a dot to a location to the number of steps you must take to find a dot. And just when you thought you had heard it all, the mathematicians now tell you that a point is something that happens to you. Event! Event. A point in... Space-time! One expert exemplifies that a point is like the explosion of a star. Another one says that a point is like a car collision. <laughs> is this what the point of geometry looks like? Let's run all that by again and fast forward to get the point. The mathematicians point to a dot, tell you that it's really a location, and construct their space times and geometric figures with events. So let's get to the point. We have no shortages of definitions. The problem is that the mathematicians have blended several conflicting definitions. If a point can simultaneously be a dot, a location, an ordered pair, and an event, then of course the mathematicians can use this malleable hypothesis to explain any theory. In science, the word point is a no-brainer. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know what a point is. For the purposes of science, a point is a dot. Objectively, that's all we have before us. This is a geometric figure. It has a single property, shape. The dot version of the word point is scientific because it can be used consistently. In contrast, a location is an abstract concept. 
one property a location certainly doesn't have is shape. Therefore, it doesn't even belong in geometry. For its part, an ordered pair is nothing but a set of coded instructions that tells you where to find a dot. And an event is the collision of two dots. The mathematicians may argue that they have no use for the dot of geometry in their discipline. The answer is simple. Science doesn't care whether a mathematician can use a dot. This is what every person in the world visualizes when someone mentions the word point. Whether the word point means something different in mathematics is irrelevant to the instant argument. What the mathematicians cannot do is use several definitions simultaneously. This is unscientific. This is religion at its worst. One famous example where the mathematicians use more than one definition simultaneously is the line comprised of infinite points. The mathematicians point to a line, tell you that it is made of points, and then claim that they can fit an infinite number of points between two points. Are they talking about dots, locations, or numbers? In fact, it is the refusal to define the word point that leads to some of the amusing conclusions of mathematical physics. A mathematician tells you that it takes two points to define a line. Two distinct points A and B always completely determine a straight line. And another one tells you that it takes two lines to make a point. No, no, you're wrong. Point, the intersection of two lines. Do you get my point? By not defining the words point and line, the mathematicians of the world have ended up with circular definitions exactly the predicament they intended to avoid by leaving these words undefined. Certainly none of these irrational conclusions have anything to do with science. The only reason the mathematicians continue to tell you that the word point should remain undefined is that they cannot use it consistently. If they define a point as a dot, they cannot use it as a location. And if they define it as a location, they cannot use it as a dot. It's just that simple. It is the use of the word point, both as a dot and as a location, as an object and as a concept, that enables the establishment to get away with the fantastic theories you read about in mainstream journals.